Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Maria Lika Antenet Garcia, your instructor for the subject Teaching Common Competencies in Home Economics. So, on the last learning video, we have discussed the part 1 for competencies in caregiving. So, we have discussed six four competencies we have provide care and support to infants and toddlers, provide care and support to children, foster social, intellectual, creative, and emotional development of children, foster the physical development of children, provide care and support to elderly and provide care and support to people with special needs. So let's move on and discuss the part two of the core competencies. So what is our objectives for today? We have to develop better understanding of caregiving and also identify and discuss the core competencies. So what is the competency standards? The caregiving NC2 qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to provide care and support to the infant and toddlers, provide care and support to children, foster social, intellectual, creative, and emotional development of children, foster the physical development of children, provide care and support to elderly, provide care and support to people with special needs, maintain healthy and safe environment, respond to emergency, clean living room, dining room, bedroom, toilet and bathroom, wash and iron clothes, thin and fabric, and also prepare hot and cold meals. So this is the unit code and the core competencies. So let us discuss the first um, competencies in the part two. So we have maintained a healthy and safe environment. So this unit covers the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to maintain various aspects in home maintenance. Taking into consideration health, safety, and environment. So we all know that caregiving is providing support and care for people with special needs, to elderly, um, to infants, toddlers, and children. So what is the main focus here is to be with them, try to provide care and support, in every aspects, no? kahit sa bahay, kasama ka. For, if elderly naman, pwede sa sa mga home for the agent and etc. So, we also uh, let's discuss the summer of learning outcomes. So, upon completion of this module, trainee and student must be able to maintain a clean and hygienic environment, provide a safe environment, and supervise the safety of clients. So, let's move to the element and performance criteria. Ano po ba si element and performance criteria? Element, these are the topics under, or topics to be discussed under each competency. And also, we have the performance criteria. So, ano yung mga dapat gawin under each element? For the things to be performed under each element. And also, the topics under each element. So, we have number one, maintain a clean and hygienic environment. So, cleaning occurs as an ongoing process as per regulations. Appropriate cleaning agent, tools, and equipment are used in accordance with established procedures. Infection control procedures are followed according to established procedures. Ventilation, lighting and heating, cooling are adequately maintained. Personal hygiene health procedures are adhered to all times. So, beds and bedding are clean to confirm to health, hygienic and safety requirements as relevant. So, ano naman yung pinaka-focus dito is to make the environment clean and hygienic. So, this is the different ways to do that. 
exists to provide a safe environment. So, organizational policies and procedures on safety are implemented as required. Environment protection policy is implemented. Tools, equipment, toys, and games are appropriate to the age of the, ch of the child. Equipment is selected, checked, and maintained to ensure safety. The environment is set up to ensure safety of the client. Area is checked for hazards and breaks or the reduction strategies are implemented. So, fire exits are kept and obstruct. Disposal of waste is conducted in a safe and hygienic way. Cleaning materials are stored safely. So, of course, it's not all about the clean and a hygienic environment, but also you should provide a safe environment. Lalo na if you're going to take care of an infant, a toddler, or children. So, there's a high risk on different tools, equipments found in the room or in the home. So, we also have to supervise in the safety of clients. So, clients are supervised in accordance with legal requirements and regulations. Rules for safe play are explained, modeled, and implemented. Direct contact with individuals, group is maintained. Potential risks are identified and adapted upon to prevent minimized risk. Hazard and potential hazards in the environment are identified and clients are informed accordingly. So, emergencies and evacuation procedures are discussed and practiced with clients. Supervision is used as an opportunity to interact with clients. So, what is the things that you're going to do here is to supervise and also um, ask, um, talk to your clients regarding the supervision of their safety. Um, safe ba ba sila sa environment or hindi? Siyempre, dapat you should discuss that. And also, discuss what are the best thing, things to do in order for them to be safe in those environments. So next we have the range of variables. These are the highlighted um, words, the variable natin from our element and performance criteria. Then we discuss, take we further discuss lang siya on what those certain variable means and what is the um, range of different variables. Kung hanggang saan, kung ano bang meaning, kung yun na, kung ano yung meaning pinapahiwatig sa bawat variable. So, we have number one, tools and equipment. Ito yung minimum na tools and equipment. We have the cleaning materials, vacuum cleaner, play area, and with appropriate toys and panning. Sa so, number two naman, we have the legal requirements and regulations regarding supervision. We also have the staff and children ratios. Babies are never left unattended in the bath or on change table. Next, cleaning. We have disinfecting nappy, change areas, washing floor, vacuuming, disinfecting toilet areas. So, we have disposal of waste materials, nappy, salt, tissues, and wires, alternative method for the rest. Like, for example, how much? We also have number five, organizational procedures implemented for safety. Ano ba yun? We have legal and legislative requirements, organizational policies regarding excursions. Next, we have checking area for hazards may include checking for needles, sharp implements in outdoor areas, animal droppings in outdoor areas. Hindi lang outdoor areas, it can also happen in the indoor. We can have sharp implements or let's say sharp tools and equipment. So, maintaining their contact with child with vary according to child's age, child's level of independence, independence, child safety, risk-taking behaviors, activity child is involved in, ability of child. So, of course, you're going to contact them depending on their age and their capacity. Next, we have to contact can include site 
sound less viewing windows line of sight within physical reach also of the rules for safe play piece of equipment and how children will play together provide a safe environment and risk reduction strategies will vary according to whether the location is a purpose designed and built center again since I go home for the agent may naman um very serious na tinatawag yung pwedeng pag-iwanan ng mga bata and etc. Non-purpose built center, a home appropriate for the age range of children. Next is hazard may be identified to children in a range of ways. We have verbally, by signs and by symbols. We also have the risk reduction strategy. Gates on stairs, covers on electric socket, and etc. So let's move now to the evidence guide. We have the critical aspects of the competency. So assessment requires evidence that the candidate must demonstrate that the ability to provide a clean and safe environment for children. Observe personal hygiene and health procedures. Implement environment protection policy. Explained and implemented rules for safe play, identify potential risk and hazard and explain to clients, discuss and practice with clients the emergencies and evacuation procedures. So we have the support knowledge and attitudes. Yan. So pakipasa na lang po, you have your topics. The skills, we should have risk minimization. Asian strategies and risk reduction strategies. Strategies to minimize the spread of infectious disease and interpersonal safe use for equipment and materials. So, uh, these are the supported skills in order for us to actually um, provide a good service for this competency. Resource implication, and there, these following resources must be provided. And also, we have the methods of assessment. It can be through demonstration with questioning and interview. We also have the context of assessment in a simulated workplace setting. So, let's move on to the second in the part two of for competitiveness. We have to respond to emergency. So, this unit covers the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to respond to emergencies, which include various aspects of disease control and prevention and emergency measures that can be administered effectively. So we have the summary of learning outcomes. Upon completion of this module, the trainee or student must be able to implement procedure for infection control, recognize and respond signs of potential illness, respond to emergency if an accident administer medication within guidelines and respond to threats and situation of danger. So let's discuss the element and performance criteria. So we have number one, implementation procedures for infection control and prevention. So what is the performance criteria? Inclusion guidelines for children and others suffering from an infectious condition is followed. So, hygiene and health principles are implemented in care practice. Infection control guidelines, guidelines are followed. We have discussed this and it's very important, important that we have infection control and prevention in order for us to minimize the risk of different diseases or infection on our clients. Next, we have to recognize and respond to signs of potential illness. So, signs of potential illness are reported. Medical assistance is sought as necessary according to policies and procedures. Clients and relatives are informed as soon as possible and client is comforted and settled. So, the main focus here is to actually discuss it to the clients whether or not they need a medical assistance or there are um, potential illnesses. You should recognize and respond to the signs of potential illness. 
Next is to respond to emergencies and accidents. The safety of self and others is ensured. Immediate first aid is provided as required. Strategies to come, reassure and comfort guides are implemented. Details of emergencies are recorded and reported accurately. Information is provided to others according to established policies. Emergencies and accidents are responded to occur according to the established guidelines and legislative requirements. So, you should know how to respond to emergencies and accidents. Hindi, uh, you, you know how to become and respond immediately to those struggles or emergencies that may or accidents that may arise. So, administer medication needed guidelines. So, medication is administered according to organizational policies and legislative requirements. Medication is stored according to requirements. Medication is checked for name, instruction, and use by date. All administered medications are documented in accordance with requirements. So, for example, na nagkaroon na ng medical assistance sa client and there are medications being given. Siyempre, there is no other person than you that could provide the medication to the client. So, first, ikaw magpapain ng medication. Mostly, this happens on infants and toddlers, children, and also elderly. And, of course, the um, those children with special needs or those people with special needs. So, next we have to respond to threats and situations for danger. So, remove client from threat or danger or remove danger threat from client. The level of immediate danger is assessed and the situation is reported to an appropriate person. So, appropriate emergency procedures are implemented to ensure the safety of children and workers. Next, we have the range of variables. We have the variable number one, tools and equipment. So, ito po yung tools and equipment. Kasi yung sabi, we have vital science kit, dummies, pegboard, disposable gloves, screen equipment, utensils, soft toys, and protective equals. We also have the hygiene and health principles. Ayan, hand washing, etc. We also have the medication. Requirements for storage medication may include but are not limited to the following. Legislative guidelines and organizational procedures. So, the, there are different kinds of medication. Meron kailangan nasa cold area or refrigerated. Meron naman na nasa room temperature lang. So, it depends on the medication. So, we have the evidence guide. We have the critical aspects of competency. So, what is assessment records evidence that a candidate must demonstrate the ability to respond quickly to emergency and implement correct procedures including administering first aid. So, implemented procedures for infection control and prevention, recognized and responded to the signs of potential illness, responded to emergencies and accidents, and also responded to threats and situation for danger. So, what are the underpinning knowledge and attitudes? We have this is spread and transmission and etc. Guidance for inspection control. Yan, pakibasa na lang po. You have your copies. We also have the resource implication. We have the following resources must be provided. The methods of assessment and the context of assessment. Let's move on to the third core competencies under part 2. We have clean living room, dining room, bedrooms, toilets, bathrooms, and kitchen. So, we have already discussed na caregiving is being provided, can be also provided in different um, establishments. It can be at home, it can be or home for the agent, can be in a particular um, area which you can provide care in a nursery and etc. So, this unit covers the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to perform home management by providing clean, secure, and safe environment. So, ano naman ba yung mga summary of uh, learning outcomes natin? We have, upon completion of this module, the trade so that must be able to clean surfaces and floors, clean furnishing and fixtures, makeup beds and cots, clean toilet and bathroom, sanitize room, and clean 
room environment and clean kitchen. So, yan. Um, clean surfaces and floors. I think they discussed on that dito is what are the proper ways to clean, what are the establishment procedures to be followed, and different SOPs to be followed or standard operating procedures regarding on cleaning surfaces and floors. Kawin ko na po babasahin. Very self-explanatory. Next is clean furnishing and fixtures. So, same na po. You should provide comfort and convenience through different ways in following the standard operating procedures and establishment procedures on providing or cleaning, furnishing, and fixtures. Ano ba yun? It can be um, the lighting, the things around the room, and etc. So, making up beds and cots, of course, very self-exploratory to know how would you make bed, make up the bed of your clients. Lalo na pag mga kids, what are the right um, bed and what are the correct bed sheets, what are the correct um, sizes for the pillows and etc. It should be you should know how to make up beds for child or infants and toddlers, for children, for those special needs and those elderly. So, it depends on the client. Yeah. So, ito lang namin. Dilinisin mo yung higaan. Ayos yun. Next is to clean toilet and bathroom. Very self-explanatory. So, cleaning the toilet and the bathroom. Of course, kasama dyan yung um, area. Hindi lang po yung sink. Um, si bowl or si um, shower area. Lahat po na kasama sa toilet and bathroom. If you have lavatory, if you have bathtub, and etc. And of course, you're going to follow the operate, standard operating procedures. And also, how you should have the techniques and procedures on how to specifically clean those accessories or bathtub, lavatory, or toilet. Next, we have to sanitize soon. So, sanitizing agents are 100% accurately measured and mixed in accordance with relevant safety regulations. So, excess mixtures of sanitizing, sanitizing agents are disposed according to environment requirements. Rooms are sanitized in, according, in accordance with standard operating procedures. Equipment is cleaned after use in accordance with manufacturer's instruction. All cleaning materials and equipment are stored in a safe place as per SOPs. Routine maintenance is carried out through as per standard operating procedures. So, we should sanitize the room. Of course, we're going to use the different cleaning agents in order for us to do the sanitizing. So, we have to maintain clean, clean room environment. So, hindi lang pwede every week lang tayong mag-cleanliness. But also, we have to maintain the cleanliness of the environment. So, these are the different ways in order for you to do that. Next is to clean kitchen. So, hindi lang po tayo nag-provide ng medicine. We can also give out um, service on cooking the needs di ba? Meron tayong nutritional requirements for these specific people na inaalaga natin. Of course, we are also the ones na magpro-provide ng pagkain sa kanila. On what are the proper food that they should eat depending on their nutritional needs. So, these are the different ways in order for us to clean the kitchen. So, we should discuss the reach of variables. What is the variable? We have number one, cleaning equipment, supplies, and materials. So, it may include but are not limited to. Ito yung mga pwedeng panginis. Ayan. And also, the equipment being used, the supplies and materials. 
Next, we have the floor type surface textures. We have concrete and etc. So, syempre, there are different techniques and standards in order for us to follow, in order for us to clean at, um, this certain floor types and surface textures. We also have the waste, wet and dry. It can be dust, paper, food, stones, and gravel, and etc. So, we also have the furnishing and fixtures. Ito po yung tinatawag natin na furnishing and fixtures. May include but are not limited to the following. We also have the ceiling fittings. Ayan po. Smoke detectors, sprinkler system, etc. We also have the ceiling. It can be flat, suspended, or hard. We also have bathroom supplies and accessories. Ayan po. We have sanitizing agents. Sanitizing equipment, supplies and materials, linens, yan, napkins, table cloths, serving cloths, tea towels, clothing, cleaning cloths, etc. We have the kitchen appliances, the, the things that we're going to use in order for us to prepare the food of the clients. We have the kitchen supplies and materials, ayan po. So we have the evidence guide, the critical aspects of competency. So, assessment requires evidence that the candidate must clean surfaces and floors, clean furnishing and fixtures, made up beds and cots, clean toilets and bathrooms, sanitize room, and take clean in room environment and clean kitchen. So, next we have the underpinning knowledge and knowledge. Attitudes or these are done, knowledge that we should have in order for us to actually create or provide a good service in this competency. This is also the supporting skills that we should have. We have the different resource implications. This following resources must be provided. We have copies of relevant standards, training books, and assessment and blind guides, accident report forms, and etc. We have the methods of assessment. It can be through written test, examination, demonstration, and with questioning, observation with questioning, and also the context of assessment is um, assessed through simulated workplace setting or work setting. Let's, let's now discuss the fourth or competencies from part 2, we have wash and iron clothes, linen and fabric. So, this unit covers the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to perform home management by providing clean and safe environment. So, hindi lang about uh, uh, environment mismo, ni consumer, but also sa uh, different things that they are wearing or sa bed, na mga um, linens and fabrics, you should know how to wash and iron, iron to certain things. So, ano ba yung summary of learning outcomes natin? We have check and sort clothes, linen and fabrics, remove, remove stains, prepare washing equipment and supplies, perform laundry, dry clothes, linen and fabric, iron clothes, and linen and fabric. Check and sort clothes, linens, and fabric. So, ito lang naman yung how would you process, how would you sort, ano, from white to colored clothes. Um, of course, different pa rin yung paglalagyan ng mga uh, bed sheets, pillowcase, and etc. So, sabi dito, so, clothes, linens, and fabrics are sorted according to texture, color, size, and defects. Sorted items are prioritized according to cleaning process required as the urgency of the item. So, syempre, kailangan may unahin, lalo na yung haliwa. Naihian ng bata or their sapbook on that certain area or in that certain plot. Of course, you should prioritize to be sorted item or that sorted item. We have defective clothing, linen, and fabric. It should be sewn, darned, using appropriate threads and stitches. Next, we have to remove stains. So, different stains po, dapat alam natin kung paano uh, i-remove. We should know how to use the correct chemicals or cleaning agents 
and we should follow all the, st the standard operating procedures. So we also uh, need to prepare washing equipment and supply. Ayan. Ano ba yung washing equipment? Na? Like for example, the dryer, um, washing machine, etc. And yung supplies naman, we have the, the uh, cleaning agents. So, perform laundry. Of course, we're going to perform now the laundry. Ayan. So, there are different performance criteria. Pakibasa na. Ang, mini -mini, ang pinapakita naman dito is the process of performing the laundry. Next is to dry clothes and linen and fabric. How would you dry those clothes? Ayan. The proper standard of dry clothes. We also have the iron clothes and linen and fabrics. Ayan. Iron meaning, tapansyay mo na yung mga gamit. Ayan. Iron clothes, linen and fabrics are folded placed in a hanger and stored in designated cabinets as per instruction. Ironing equipment and materials are stored in the appropriate area following safety procedures. So, we have the range of variables. We have the sorted items. Ayan. We also have the personal protective pala perinaria. We have the gloves, apron, yung stains na pwede nyo uh, meron. Yung um, linens and fabrics. Ayan. We have coffee, cola, cordial, chewing gum, food, mud, dirt, Grease, blood, fruit, stain, and wine, and etc. Stain remover, ayan. We have acid cleaners, alkali, chlorine, bleach, or purpose detergent. We also have the laundry area. We have the washers, dryers, clothes, line, etc. We have the laundry supplies and materials, ayan. Sorting basket shelves, hangers, stain removing agents, and etc. So we have, let's move now to the evidence guide. What is the critical aspects of the competency? Assessment records evidence that the candidate must check and sorted soil clothes in the fabric, remove stains, prepare washing equipment and supplies, perform laundry, dry clothes and linen fabric, iron clothes and linen fabric. In short, marunong ka maglaba at magayos ng mga clothes, linen or fabric na nilaba. So we have the underpinning knowledge and attitudes. So these are the different knowledge that you should know in order for you to perform this competency. And also this is these are the key skills. Tama ba? Oh yes, skills. Nagkamali lang ako dito. Dito. Skills po dapat yan. Underpinning skills. Yeah. Ay hindi, naulit lang pala siya ako. Ay, hindi. Kasama pa to. 2.12, 2.24. Sorry. Next, we have the underpinning skills. Ito po. Yan. Parang si, ano lang naman, critical aspects. Performing the laundry, removing that says, and etc. Also, have the resource implications, the methods of assessment, and the context of assessment. So, we're going to discuss the last for competencies. Yan, we have prepare hot and cold meals and food. So, this unit covers the knowledge, skills, and attitudes in cooking basic hot food and cold meals and includes preparation of ingredients, cooking meals and dishes according to recipes, present prepared cooked dishes, sauces, preparation of appetizers, butter designs, dessert, salad, sandwiches, sauces, dressing, garnishes, and preparing centerpieces. So, ano ba yung uh, learning outcomes natin? We have to prepare ingredients according to recipes, cook meals and dishes according to recipes, present cook dishes, um, prepare sauces, dressing, and garnishes, prepare appetizers, prepare desserts and salads, prepare sandwich, store excess foods and ingredients, convert con unconsumed cook food. So, we have prepared element number one, prepare ingredients according to recipes. So, sabi dito, mise and plus, meaning, prepare all those ingredients before cooking. Ayan. So, kasama dito yung purchasing of the ingredients of course, preparing them before cooking. Okay. Now, 
over to cook meals and dishes according to recipe. Yeah. Following the different recipes uh, or ways in order for us to actually cook meals. So, di ba meron tayong meat dishes, poultry, seafood dishes, egg dishes, pasta, or soup, kung ano pa ba niya, vegetable dishes, yeah. So, we should follow them according to their recipe. Next, we have to present cook dishes. How would we present it? Of course, we have the serving. Serving for portion is standardized. Lalo na pag hindi naman pwedeng kumain si client na madami. Um, presentation of cooked dishes are developed and corrected in accordance with SOPs. Food quality is maintained and checked as per SOPs. Um, time and temperature condition of food is ensured before serving based on freezing temperature. So, hindi lang yung pag-present ng cooked dishes, but also um, the way you should give out the food to the clients. Next is prepare sauces, dressings, and garnish. Ayan. So, it depends on your client kung ano ba yung type nila. Ayan. So, you should know how to prepare sauces, dressings, and garnish. Next, we have to prepare appetizers. So, yan, mga appetizers before heading into the meal. Kung, pan, kung there are several um, ways to to arise the appetites of your client. So, do you have, do you have words? Yan, hindi ko alam kung tama yung pronunciation ko. Or prepare according to the requirement preference of the client. Canities are prepared according to requirement for preference of the client. And also, finger foods are prepared according to requirement or preference of the client. So, it depends on the client. And, ito po yung mga things that we can provide to our, or food that we can provide to our consumer in order for their appetite to appetite to our Next is prepared dessert and salad. Yeah. We have fruit dessert, pastry dessert, most cold salad, smoothed salad, and etc. So we should know how to prepare this. So we also have the prepared prepare sandwiches. Yeah. Rice and black and curry, you should know how to prepare sandwich. Store excess food and ingredient. And yeah. mga sopra, paano ba naman ito yung store? And also the ingredients that you can use. We have the proper method of refrigerator, refrigeration, and proper storing of dry food as implemented. Within dry food ingredients are properly stored as per SOP. Excess ingredients are stored according to client's requirement, and unconscious food are stored according to the procedures. So next, we have to convert unconscious food. Depends kung marunong ka mag-transform ng already cooked food into new. Ayan. So, you should know how to or you should be very flexible in creating new um, food from unconsumed food. food. Para hindi na saya. How to actually um, pack and wrap them. Wrap them. Ayan. What are the temperature to be followed in order for the food to be maintained and not spoiled? Yeah. So, next we have the range of variables. We have ingredients. It may include but are not limited to meat, vegetables, seafood, poultry, stock, cold food, and etc. We also have the recent mass. Ayan, prepare the ingredients, fancy utensils. Before cooking, we have thawing, soaking, and unfreezing. We also have vegetable ingredient preparation. Ayan, ito yung mga vegetable ingredient preparation. We have skill, peel, pear, chop, slice, red, pure, veg, grain, pure, and corn, and corn. Next, we have the vegetable dishes. 
and preparation, we are boiling, blanching, sauteing, braising, gratinating, roasting, and baking. The seafood ingredient preparation, we have chopped, sliced, filleting, minced, shred, peeled, diced, blanched, marinated, and poached. Vegetable dishes preparation, boiling, blanching, sauteing, braising, gratinating, roasting, and baking. Seafood dishes preparation, boiling, steaming, sauteing, deep frying, pan frying, poaching, grilling, basting. We also have the soup preparation, it can be through sauteing and simmering. We have meat ingredients preparation, sliced, chopped, devon, diced, meat and marinade. Meat dishes preparation, boiling, steaming, simmering, steaming, frying, steaming, roasting, baking, browning, pressure, rice cooking, poaching, blanching, basting, braising, grilling. Poultry ingredient preparation, debone, chopped, sliced, diced, shred, cube, mint, skin, marine. We also have poultry dishes preparation. We have boiling, skimmering, steaming, frying, sauteing, braising, grilling, roasting, barbecue, and baking. Egg dishes naman, preparation, boiling, frying, poaching, basic baking. The pasta grain and farinaceous dishes preparation. We have boiling, steaming, poaching. Sauteing, gratinating, and baking. We have the horse divorce, divorce preparation. We have the peel, clear, sliced red cube, blanch, pulp, steam, marinade, and season. appetizer or small dish or starter served before a meal. Like for example, chicken dolly pop, a slice of bacon, yan. Yan po yung sea horse, the of course. Next we have sweet sauces, sugar syrups, sweet syrups, fruit purees, sauces and bodies, chocolate based sauces, custard creams, flavored butters and creams. Yeah. So let's move now to the evidence guide. We have the critical aspects of competency. So assessment requires evidence that the holiday must be prepared ingredients according to recipes, cooked meals and dishes according to recipes, presented cooked dishes, prepared appetizers, prepared sauces, dressings and garnishes, prepared desserts and salads, prepared sandwiches, Stored excess foods and ingredients and converted unconsumed food and uncooked food. So we also have the underpinning knowledge and attitude. So these are the different knowledge in order for us to actually apply this competency. Yeah, and underpinning skills, of course, the different cooking method, handling of kitchen equipment, proper storing, and food costing and proportioning, and etc. We have resource implications. Battles of assessment through written test, demonstration with questioning, observation with question and in the context of assessment may be assessed in workplace or in a simulated work setting. So that would be the end of our discussion for lesson 7. We have discussed the common competencies, the part 1, for competencies and part 2 of for competencies in caregiving. So since we are done, please comment done on our comment box if you have watched, if you have really watched this video from the start and here to the end of the video. So thank you for listening and watching our lesson for learning video. So bye bye.